Day of the Dead with the war paint on. They come out of the shadows looking like an eight foot tall wolf because they're wearing a wolf pelt of an ancient wolf that used to be big as hell. They're going to be coming out of the woods and people going to think they're seeing a bear, but it's a man with a bear suit on. Why do you think they call them skinwalkers? I don't have to call on nobody. All I got to do is let them keep picking on Malachi. That's all I got to do and stay out of it. Keep Let them keep picking on him and then just stay out of it. And I won't have to call on nobody. He'll clean it up. This is not what people think it is. People think that this 3D shit is more real than the spiritual shit. When the 3D shit is all of the spiritual beings decide to follow a set of rules. One, you cannot come into earth in your mythic form during this chapter. Everybody got to come in in the form of a human. All of the magicians know this, but the nine magicians don't. So when you look at a person that was a dwarf or a gnome or an ogre, they just look like funny looking people. But if you look a little bit closer, you be like, dang, that motherfucker look like Shrek. Right? You have to be able to see. But you can't see because your mind is blinded by the bullshit they taught us that was designed to blind the mind. And we can't take it personal that we got deceived. But the fact that you find out that you got deceived gives you a uh, vaccination and inoculation to that very same deception. One, that's why I keep explaining how this shit works. Once you understand how it work, it can't work on you unless you force it to. Your natural spiritual defenses begin to put resistance up to the BS. And this is going to facilitate your awakening. I'm just following instructions. But I'm telling you now. They didn't rounded a whole bunch of people up. In 2020, we was at about 8.4 billion people. Believe me, it might be about 3.7 billion people on earth right now. But they don't want to tell y'all the sheer number of people that was just walking down the street and they just turned off. I told people four years ago, I said, y'all going to know if they reported it in the news because people just going to be walking down the street and drop dead for no reason. Then all of a sudden they came out with some stuff a couple years after I said that called sudden adult death syndrome. And they call it SADS for a nickname. Just like sudden infant death syndrome is called SIDS. I'm not no prophet. I'm not prophesying. I'm reading a script that would to the average person is like reading the streamers in the matrix. But once you've been a coder and you've been coding computers, that's nothing for you to read it at a rapid pace like that, because that's how you program computers and you a programmer, but a non programmer looking at the streamer in the matrix needs a translator. So I'm translating the shit that I'm seeing and for the people that don't know what I'm doing, it might give the appearance as if I'm rendering a prophecy when I'm not rendering a prophecy. I'm just reading the script that they wrote and showing you what they saying so you can see the anomalies in the fallacies that they putting in front of us, which breaks you free from the bullshit. I don't know who rounded them up. I know a lot of people went through Stargates. That's not here. They were not allowed to kill them on Earth. Because they would have reincarnated on Earth. 
So there's a lot of people, especially a lot of those that was part of that Swiss royal family that lived in them underground bunkers. See, when I was telling people that four years ago, they didn't believe me. But now they didn't already released once they didn't cleared the people out, now they releasing the information on the bunkers in Switzerland. And they had more underground bunkers shit than they had cities above ground. It was whole bustling cities underground. That's where your that's where your world leaders, your Amun priesthood, was hiding the whole time that this American warfare has been waging. This is a 500-year protracted struggle. Homeland security ain't never stopped defending the home. It's just that the people who was supposed to be helping them fell asleep because they got tired of watching the war go on. They'd rather go take a nap. This shit over with. The, all of these, pay attention to the solar rays. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you like this. Watch Kalai. He going to tell you about, the, he going to keep you up to date on Schumann Resonance. And he going to keep you on to date on the UVB rays. Um, in some areas, um, he a little extremist for some. But don't disregard everything but what he telling you about the solar rays and the Schumann Resonance the UVB rays and pay attention, right? Don't let his uh, sometime aggressive disposition make you miss what he's telling you because he's telling you valuable information, right? Because you getting source codes that's upgrading your DNA, right? When we went through the Mahertha those source codes came from the great mother that directly corresponded to the mitochondrial frequency of the women. Then they sent out signals from earth in the Schumann resonance that went as a magnetic radiant field to the sun. The sun in return responded with what's called solar flares and solar storms in order to feed the radioactive particles the genetic upgrade data from the sun in order to upgrade the next generation. So we gonna go from living 65 years to more like 350 to 1,000 years. With good health, we not gonna suffer from aging in our 50s and 60s we not gonna experience biological aging until we several hundred years old. And the rate of aging will be drastically reduced because they maimed us when they altered the tail mirrors on the genes. And they gave us something called the human uh, aging hormone. Go check out Cynthia Keenan from the University of California, Berkeley, and her research into the aging process. She's a gerontologist, right? They also look up the telomere extension technology that's been developed once the scientists discovered that somebody altered our DNA by reducing the length of the tail mirrors on the genes which causes our ages to accelerate right all this is available information look at epigenetics because in epigenetics it's going to tell you wherever you at you broadcasting from another location and the broadcast receiver is your biological entity called a earth rover, a earth meat rover, a meat suit. And you will understand how the frequencies translate in the information in the DNA 
that animates your reality, right? And it's important to break free from all of the defense hatreds. Now, the defense hatreds is you developed a hate along a certain line to defend yourself against a so-called white supremacist or a Republican or a Christian or Jew or a Muslim, whatever. You developed a defense mechanism of hatred to defend you from the onslaught of a hatred. But you don't think you affected by it because you find yourself in the position of right according to how you interpreted the problem. So once you discovered you was in the position of right, it justifies you to hold on to the hatred that's blocking your ascension. But you have no clue that you holding on to the hatred because you don't have a clue that it's a response to the hate that you gave. Somebody gave you hate and you had to turn it around, alchemicalize it and turn it into defensive hate so that it doesn't diminish your self-esteem. But now it's time for you to, to let go of all of the hates and embrace infinite wisdom by incarnating divine love frequency, right? This is what the activating of the matriarchy side effect is. When the women start turning on this unconditional love field, they start speaking life into their man instead of having to tell a motherfucker some shit. Instead of always got from the telling motherfuckers some shit. You, some of the people you got to tell some shit, you speaking aggressively tearing them down when they might need your words of wisdom and a little bit of compassion in order to straighten up their reality. But we, got, we always got to tell a motherfucker some shit. I can't let a motherfucker get away unless I tell him. You don't got to tell a motherfucker shit. Get out of that psychological damaging bullshit that you obligated to bitch check a motherfucker because they saying some stuff or they did some stuff. If you ain't ready to go to the, all the way to the extreme, let that shit go. Because you don't know the person that you got to tell something to might be in the right mood to be prepared to go to the worst of extremes if a motherfucker tell them something on this day. Yesterday, nope. Tomorrow, nope. But today, yep. Stop trying to always get the last word. That means you insecure. If you always got to get the last word, yeah, you, you have insecurities in yourself where you feel like motherfuckers can't hear you. Stop giving a fuck if motherfuckers hear you. Stop caring so much if people think you crazy or different or whatever. Because all they doing is using your emotions to manipulate you into a self-defeating psychological profile that only end up becoming a problem to you in the end. You do not have to tell a motherfucker a thing. You don't have to be disrespectful and curse everybody out. You don't always got to have the last word. Right? Sometimes it's better to take a deep breath and say, that ain't even worth my time. I'm not finna let that shit upset my peace. Because when you can stand there in your peace, the motherfuckers that's trying to upset you falls into their own misery when it don't work. You staying peaceful in the midst of hostilities will make a motherfucker dive off of a 40 foot, 40, a uh, story building and frustration rather than deal with you not giving a fuck. 
And that's just the way it is. We don't always need to tell a motherfucker nothing. Go back to the Godfather. Son, uh, Vito Corleone told Sonny Corleone, never tell a man what you're thinking. Why would he tell him that? Because when people know what you're thinking, they know how to put obstacles in your path. They know how to interfere with your progress. They know how to tear your shit down before you even get builded up. Stop telling all your business. Don't tell strangers your personal life when you first meet them. They might not even be the type of people that you won't knowing about your life, but you didn't told them all your shit before you realize, I wish I wouldn't have told that motherfucker nothing. You would rather say, I wish I have a chance in the future to tell them something than to be regretting telling them something before you got to know them. You know. It's, it's all part of a war front to keep us in them low vibrating energy. We watching our government commit criminal activity and prosecute the ones that was born to change our condition using attrition, meaning gradually changing the part they could. And when they all got done changing, we'll all be changed into our own culture again. But rather than do that, now we need the shock and awe artificially manufactured savior bullshit Barack Obama first black president drama in order to make us feel like we worth being here and he didn't care two shits about us he wanted them look like us but ain't us ass niggas cause he ain't did nothing for us anybody that you look up to as a celebrity all you have to do to determine if they with us or against us, is try to find out what did they do in the neighborhood they from. If these people got on and got millions of dollars and moved out there to some big old overpriced building and disregarded the whole community that reared them and helped them to develop their talent and skill set, and they don't do nothing to reach back to assist anybody in the community. They ain't none of us. They not none of us. Look, before the settlers came, we was the type. We would go all the way across the country and send resources we uh, uh, had accumulated back so that the family can utilize it to help the most people in the family. Now what we do, we move to the other side of the country and keep it all to ourselves. That's not our behavior. That's not our people. We we that's not natural to us. Look, go hang, go watch them young, them young cats hang out on the block and they well, when I came up we was drinking 40s. When we was drinking 40s, I live in Pontiac. If I would have went to Detroit and uh, to a park and be like, who want a 40? And with a box of 40s, they would all be cool. Come on, that's what we do. This is how we meet each other. This is how we get to know each other. We do stuff to bring us together so we can get to learn each other, learn how to best communicate across different cultural barriers, and we start with the ones that's in the closest, the other side of town. The family down the street, right? The ones that live in the house behind us. I ain't never talked to them. I think I'm going to go around there today and see if the old man want a beer. Right? Oh, son, I don't drink beer, but you can go grab me a scotch. Now you just got to know somebody in your neighborhood that you didn't know 20 minutes earlier. Because you asked him, did he want to have a beer? This is what they used to call Southern hospitality. But this used to be all over the land because everybody all over the land come from the Southern hospitality of the old Mississippians. 
That's the root stock. And we and everybody be, develop different practices that define their tribal differences. 